the automatic hint feature is active. To have a more challenging experience, enter automatic hint to adjust the feature at any time. All right, thank you very much. Let me show up my apple. Prologue. His muscle and sinew lay wasted under the tawny fur that covered his big, tired body. The face was that of a wild cat who had survived many battles. The pointed ears stood above a tracery of old scars that ran from crown to whiskers. He had fearsome yellowed teeth and the green barbarian eyes still alight with strange fires. His paws beat heavily against the stone as he descended. His withered paws opened the chest he had brought down with him. He pulled the pouch from its robe, placed it inside, and raised the heavy chain from his neck. He held the amulet to his brow, fondly admiring it for several moments before he laid it next to the pouch and closed the chest. Beneath the grub, beneath the cells, present where insanity dwells. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. So. Try exploring and doing things with what you discover around you, and check your belongings to see what you have. Use full sentences starting with an action verb like enter, examine, take, feel, etc. You can't lose in this game, so feel free to experiment and have fun. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Cool. Oh, okay. Huh, okay. Ah, it's one of these. It's one of these. And killing the other was... was armed with his trusty sling, which was long-distance weapon favored by others. He t tightly anchored his rope to a huge ballista boulder. And descended down the cliff side into an entrance, abandoned other, abandoned other hole called other den. Uh, we set about the first task to find a way into Corf Castle. Skipper's words of advice echoed from his mind. You find a secret entrance, all right. Maybe you just need to look. What will we'll do? Entrance. Sorry, I, I, I forgot how to spell like half of the English language. So. The dried out waterway of the old river Moss was visible outside. The den entrance was high on a sheer cliff, slightly below where the bank of the river had been. The rope Gillig had used to enter the halt was hanging nearby. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. He pondered what else might he discover by looking around and then closely examining things he found. Uh huh. He closely examined the skull and guessed that it was the skull of a hare. At least it looked very similar to a hare. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. He pondered what else might he discover by looking around and then closely examining things he found. Okay, I got The young otter narrowed his eyes and peered into the collapsing halt. The sunlight pierced only a short distance into the halt. All else was swallowed by the darkness. 
Gillig, taking a quick glance around the room, noticed there wasn't much to look at except for a pile of rubble within only a few paws' length of him. Hmm, this rubble is interesting. Gillig wanted to enter some place, but he did not know where he needed to go. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig wanted to enter some place, but he did not know where he needed to go. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig thought about entering the otter's den, known as a halt, but quickly realized he was already there. <laughs> the young otter narrowed his eyes and peered into the collapsing halt. The sunlight pierced only a short distance into the halt. All else was swallowed by the darkness. Gillig, taking a quick glance around the room, noticed there wasn't much to look at except for a pile of rubble within only a few paws' length of him. Gillig eyed the rubble on the ground and thought that it might require closer examination. Gillig stepped into the halt carefully, letting his eyes adjust to the darkness. He scanned the rubble, which was filled with wood, rocks, and even a skull of some unknown beast. His eyes stared fixedly at a peculiar piece of wood. It was long and wrapped at one end. Gillig thought it looked like an ancient wooden torch that was worth taking. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Uh, where do I see my... Where do I see my inventory, though? Uh. Gillig grabbed the torch's handle and gave a quick, powerful tug. Oh, the otter collapsed backwards, still clutching the ancient torch, as a cloud of dust burst into the air from the collapsing rubble pile. Sunlight overflowed into the room, revealing more of the halt. Gillig climbed back to his feet and waved the dancing cloud of dust from his face. Everything around him was bright and fuzzy, his eyes fixed on the swirls of air parading in the breeze. Time stood still as he dreamily smiled at the memory of the day before, surrounded by the joyous feasting of woodlanders in Brock Hall. Martin the warrior, accompanied by Gonf, the prince of mouse thieves, Skipper, the leader of the otters, and other woodlanders were billeted at Brock Hall, where meal times were like a constant feast. The woodlanders began passing food. As Skipper ate, Martin told him of Gingivere. The wildcat was kindly disposed towards the woodlanders and locked away in the cells deep beneath Kotir by his wicked sister, Queen Tsarmina. During his recent captivity in the dungeons, Martin recalled weasel guards chatter of the late Lord Verduga's scroll of inheritance which had vanished upon his death. The scroll, the guards suspected, would have named Gingivir the rightful heir and not Tsarmina. Martin cleaned the October ale from his whiskers. Mm. Kotir is not easily infiltrated. But if there's a chance that scroll exists, we must have it. Skipper raised an eyebrow as he quickly gulped the rest of his famous hot root punch. Strike me colours, and I've got just the otter for the job. As Crescent Moon hung over the warm spring night, Skipper began to tell Martin of Gillig, a young, luckless otter who meant well, but constantly found misfortune. After his most recent blunder, Skipper had been looking for a way to get him back in the otter crew's good graces. This was the opportunity he had been hoping for. At the first light of dawn, Skipper met with Gonf and Gillig. Gonf, this here is Gillig, the otter I... Hi! <laughs> Pleased to meet you, matey! Gonf excitedly shook Gillig's paw. The young otter gave a bewildered look to Skipper, who merely laughed. Now why don't you tell the lad what you told me? The mouse balladeer quickly responded in song. 
The Prince of Mouse Thieves knows a way to get into Cotier today. The gloomer who's guarded it so, no longer a reason not to go. Within the abandoned hold you'll take a slide to depths direct to lake. Oh, just find the otters. If someone would have sung an answer to me, my response would literally be, so what you're saying is, and they would have to say yes or no or do it again. Bunny Burrow, and you'll know what to do. <laughs> the mouse thief grinned from ear to ear. Suddenly, Skipper and Gillig's faces became sullen. Once, like the current Camp Willow, the old abandoned halt had been home to a crew of otters. When a landslide changed the course of the River Moss many years ago, the otters had left it behind to follow the river, and no one had lived there since. Skipper gave a good-natured chuckle and gave Gillig a hearty clap on the shoulder. Ha <laughs> ha! Billy, that kind of thinking, matey. Do this and you'll be right as a river rock with the crew afore you know it. What we need is you to sneak into Katir and retrieve Verduga's scroll so we can show it to the Thousand Eyes troops. That'll prove that Gingevere be rightful heir to Katir. The war will end and then there will be smooth sailing. That's if you think you can manage the job. Of course I can, Skipper. I won't let you down. I promise. Gillig insisted eagerly. Skipper smiled at the enthusiasm in his voice. I know you won't. Now get going. No time to lose. Gillig nodded vigorously before he quickly scurried off in the direction of the old riverbed. Gonf leaned towards Skipper, remarking quietly as the young otter left. I think he's, uh, up to the task. Skipper replied in a gruff whisper to Gonf. Aye, I do. Now best to keep this all secret, me hearty. Tis the honour of otters at matter, you see. Gaunt smiled in agreement. Aye, matey. The young otter ran across the shoreline to his bunk, nervous paws clutching his sling pouch. Picking up his coil of rope, he slung it over his shoulder. Gillig wound his sling about his paw and took unsteady aim at a nearby stump. I'll make Skip and the crew proud this time. He hurled a large river pebble, accurately hitting its target. Gillig let out a sigh of relief. He knew if he failed his mission that the penalty would be final. Gillig shook himself free of his thoughts of the past. The swirling dust cloud had finally cleared, revealing the halt. He looked around now with torch and paw. If he could just find a way to light it, then perhaps he could find the bunny burrow the mouse thief had sung about, and maybe even the scroll itself. Congratulations, you are making progress in creating your story. <laughs> Notice the Paw Prince progress bar light up. The sound you hear next will play at each new accomplishment. Alright, great, I will remember that. Yeah, you looked around, and a torn paw on hand, a light. This. Aha, uh -huh, ah, that's what he was talking about. Um, how can we light this torch? Gillig was ready to light the torch, but he needed to decide what to light it with. It was time for Gillig to brave other areas of the Dark Halt. The young otter prepared to look around and venture somewhere else. Gillig thought about what he could discover if he paused to look around. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of an ancient, ruined otter halt. From where he stood, the den looked completely abandoned and desolate. The den was lit by rays of bright sunlight that streamed in from the open entrance, thus causing the stirred-up dust motes to glow like strange fireflies. Hanging just outside the entrance and within reach was the end of the rope he had used to climb down into the decaying otter's den. 
there was a tall, unstable-looking pillar of rubble going up to the rocky ceiling. Located in plain view was a number of rubble-packed doorways which were impassable without the help of a mole. Yet there was one doorway which hadn't collapsed. It led into a dark, foreboding tunnel. Gillig reached for the rope hanging outside the halt entrance. His better judgment told him that it would be best for it to remain there, so he could leave after he was done with his mission. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig reached for the rope hanging outside the halt entrance. His better judgment told him that it would be best for it to remain there, so he could leave after he was done with his mission. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig wanted to enter some place, but he did not know where he needed to go. He wondered about the torch he had pulled from the rubble. What did he really know about it? Okay. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. The ancient torch had been lit many times and was almost at the end of its life, but it seemed the torch could still be lit one last time. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. How do I light the torch? Hmm. No. Uh, all right, uh, this is gonna take a while. Hang on. Probably not going to work. No, it won't. Gillig was ready to light the torch, but he needed to decide what to light it what with. What to light it with? It was time for Gillig to brave other areas of the Dark Halt. The young otter prepared to look around and venture somewhere else. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the Halt. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of an ancient ruined otter Halt. From where he stood... The den looked completely abandoned and desolate. The den was lit by rays of bright sunlight that streamed in from the open entrance, thus causing the stirred-up dust motes to glow like strange fireflies. Hanging just outside the entrance and within reach was the end of the rope he had used to climb down into the decaying otter's den. There was a tall, unstable-looking pillar of rubble going up to the rocky ceiling. He noticed... A number of rubble-packed doorways which were impassable without the help of a mole. Yet there was one doorway which hadn't collapsed. It led into a dark, foreboding tunnel. With confidence on his shoulders, Gillig walked into the dark tunnel. A sense of foreboding hung over him as he stepped through its many twists and turns until he could no longer see where he was going. Everything was pitch black ahead. 
but Gillig felt certain he could leave the tunnel. Hmm. Gillig felt around within the darkness and picked up something he found. He planned to check his belongings later. Gillig carefully made his way back out of the tunnel to the brightly lit entrance of the halt. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of an ancient ruined otter hall. Gillig was in the entrance chamber. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, when do I find my inventory, though? It says something about inventory. Hard work. Listen. Um, Gillig was in the entrance. Nope, okay. Um... Gillig was in the entrance chamber of it. Uh, there was something, you know, that, that did say look at the inventory, right? So, where do I. do that? Extras. Gillig checked his belongings and noted he was carrying an ancient unlit torch, a fire starting kit, a sling. Gillig curiously recalled the object he had picked up in the dark tunnel. Now that he was in daylight again, he could check his belongings to see exactly what he had found. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Gillig go. was ready to light the torch but he needed to decide what to light it with. Gillig was in the entrance chamber of the halt. Uh. Gillig took everything from the fire starting kit and lit the torch. After doing so, the remaining bits of the ancient kit were finally exhausted, and it crumbled away. Gillig wanted to enter some place, but he did not know where he needed to go. Gillig was... He walked through the open doorway. As Gillig clutched his lighted torch, he gave a huge sigh of satisfaction now that he was able to see in the dark tunnel. Gillig was in a twisty tunnel lined with rubble, at one end, the tunnel ended at a wide open space, and the other way went back to the entrance. Gillig was in a twisty tunnel lined with rubble. At one end, the tunnel ended at a wide open space, and the other way went back to the entrance. Gillig was in a twisty tunnel. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Well, that was fun once you figure it out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's not really my strong points, you know. Well, you know. Typing in commands and all that stuff, but uh, yeah, once you figure it out, it's kind of a face slap, you know, like a face palm, like, oh, of course, of course. So, uh, yeah, real fun. I I liked it. <laughs> I liked it very much once. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, we didn't unlock anything really, but yeah. See you all next time. Farewell.